Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, and today we're going to have a little bit of a prerequisite, a little bit of information uh, for, let's see here, the uh, effect schematic and the function editor. Now, the function editor is also in, uh, let's see here, is also in the X sheet room. And, um, but anyway, so it's going to be a little bit of time until I get into talking in depth about these, but this is prerequisite information, information you need to know and have absorbed uh, before you really start uh, delving into it. So uh, first of all, there's a variety of ways that you can scrub through your animation. You can do it through your, your, your X sheet. Let me get rid of that. You can do it through your X sheet like that, just scrubbing right through it. And you can also scrub through your animation uh, by going into the function editor and scrubbing through it that way. And uh, you can also scrub through your animation here on the viewer. Now with the viewer scrub, uh, I don't even know what to call this, but on, on the viewer scrubber, uh, it will always be gray unless you have the preview mode turned on. As you can see, it turned red except for on frame one. Frame one, it's white. Now, if I go ahead and play the animation, it starts playing it slower than 24 frames per second. And yet, the stuff that it's played so far is white. What happens if we rewind it? Okay, well, it looked like it was playing at 24 frames per second, except for the red. Well, that's because the preview mode is basically rendering your animation uh, in a preview mode. Okay, it's showing you what your animation is going to look like after you go ahead and render it. And so the red content is information that has not been red rendered yet, and the stuff in the white is the information that is rendered. So if I rewind it again, it's, it's going to play it at 24 frames per second. Now, with the function editor and the effects schematic, I was able to get these blur effects going on that I like so much. And uh, let me go ahead and just let this render, and then we'll resume from there. Actually, before I go about doing that, uh, there's one thing that I need to explain. Anytime that you go into, anytime you make any change, any change to your image, any change to your animation, any change to your effects or in, inside of the effects schematic, you're going to have to re-render a lot of your frames, if not all of them. And a lot of times the, the computer will do an autosave, and from there, for some reason, every time it autosaves, you're going to have to re-render a lot of frames. Uh, it's one of those little necessary evils. So uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, so the uh, animation, as you can see, has rendered. It's in white. The scrub bar is white, and we're in the preview mode. So everything has been rendered. So we can go ahead and play the animation. We can see that it looks pretty sleek. Okay, so if I go ahead and pause it, well, I end the animation right there. Okay, and I go ahead and go through each frame by frame. Now, everything that you see here, actually, let me turn off the preview mode. Um, Every frame that you see here, I with this character, I originally drew 100% uh, on one column. And eventually, I wound up copying and pasting specific portions of his body onto three different columns and uh, went ahead and applied three different effects on those three different columns. Well, they're the same effect, just applied differently on the same frames as one another because there's different motions going on. So uh, right here, uh, you can see he's got four arms, and this is actually something that's normal inside of animation in order to make a blur effect, and let me prove it to you. Okay, this is a kind of a, a skewing effect, and this is Disney here. This is uh, Winnie the Pooh, okay? Um, this is uh, Looney Tunes, okay? Kind of pioneers in, am in animation right here. And this is all communicating what should be in three frames, I guess, uh, of inf information all on one frame because it's 24 frames per second instead of 30. And with 3D uh, um, films nowadays, I believe they've upped it to 60 frames per second. Here's another skew effect that uh, animators do quite often. He's got another little skew going on with this forearm. So he's, he's moving this direction while his arm is moving upwards and all that. And I believe his head, yeah, his head is even skewed. So anyways, um, here there's these little wisps to demonstrate movement 
and that's used in animation. Here you can see multiple clones of the backside of, uh, of Daffy Duck's head and uh, little wisps going on uh, through it, throughout it. And his body is stationary, so his neck is stretching out and his head reaches this location first and then his body comes here. You can also see little remnants of, uh, of clones of the barrel of, of his gun. You can also see that his gun has moved this way because there's little remnants of clones of, uh, of, of the butt of his gun, basically the stock of his gun. Now, this one's more interesting. This is Disney, and, and Disney, uh, here he has three eyes. And uh, if, if, you, if you get uh, Aladdin and you just pause and, 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 and keep on looking frame by frame whenever there's action, you can see some masterful looking uh, uh, animation effects uh, for motion and such like that. And this is, this is just stellar. Uh, but anyways, enough of that. Let me go ahead and uh, fast forward a little bit further. Okay, you can see he's got a wisp. He's got another clone of his arm right there. He's got two heads right there uh, because the distance of his head here to here is pretty far. It may not look like it, but it's pretty distant from here to here. It's the only reason why it doesn't look that distant is because of the extra head. So uh, he's got kind of like an anticipation fist because his fist is going to wrap around and... There we have it. Now we have some clones going on. And this is the most important one that I want to demonstrate here. If I turn it on here, you can see the full effects with the preview mode. And let me go ahead and show you how I did everything, okay? Let me go ahead and just turn off all the other columns uh, for all the special effects real quick here. And uh, we can go ahead and look at this, uh, how the animation looks without any of the clones and all that. Now originally I drew all the clones and all of everything on the same column. Uh, some, of the, some of the clones are even still on this column, but I just copied and pasted them later on. And I copied and pasted them into these columns. Okay, so this is the first column right here, and this is basically his body. And that's, the, that's a wisp, wisp around his face. And that's uh, his, two, his second head. That's the clones of his body. And there's another wisp. And that's just about it with that column. If I turn off that, this is Punching Man Blur Right Arm. Stage Right Arm. Okay, so he brings up his fist. Boom. And that's it. That's all that there is on that column. Whenever I felt like there was enough motion where it deserved a blur effect. And then with this other one, Punching Man, Blur, Left. Okay? And I named the column that uh, intentionally. And there we have it. Okay? And you can still see some of these clones, uh, cloned fists, clo uh, cl little little cloned arms here and there. Um, and so what I, all I did was I, I went into my original drawing and uh, I went into this, this column, copied paste it into another column, sometimes even cut uh, specific portions out of a column as well. So let me let this render real quick again. Now uh, with this frame specifically, I found that these clones of him and this wisp back here was best served when I just completely cut it out of the original column and put it into my Punching Man uh, body blur um, column. So let me go ahead and show you information on here. Okay, so here is the effect schematic. It shares the same screen space as the stage schematic, which you access by the bottom left hand corner. I have not done anything ever with the stage schematic so far. I will get into it later, but uh, yeah, let me press on the bottom right hand corner. This is it. This is all of it right here. Now let me go ahead and open this group real quick. Okay, open group. So this is a uh, Punching Man, Blur, Left Arm, and the, it's directional blur, basically a motion blur, and it, it's plugged into the source, and then it's plugged into the uh, X sheet, and, uh, ooh, I don't have much time. So this is the function editor, and this is the table of contents here. You need to find the motion blur number three, and then you click here and here, and here you can actually see frame by frame every time that I made a change to the uh, specific effect. So I had to go in frame by frame and customize the effect. Anyways, that pretty much concludes it for this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a champion.